Hey everybody, Weem here. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Starve. This is the eighth episode, and it contains my fifth try at Don't Starve, or my fifth life, I guess you could say. Um, I learned a couple new things here as I went. I saw some things I haven't seen before, and that was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I'll kind of go over those as we zip through this episode. Uh, this episode does contain uh, the beginning of my fifth attempt, all the way to the end and um, yeah it didn't end well but you know it was interesting it was a new kind of death so yeah we'll check that out here a little bit later so one of the key things I learned in this episode was how to effectively kill rabbits now people had been mentioning in the comments that uh, rabbits were associated to rabbit holes they kinda had their hole it was like their home and they'd always go back to it and uh, for me, you know, I kind of saw that. I was, okay, cool, they run to their holes. Yeah, we all know that. I tried to swing at them, they'd run away, they'd get away. But um, I end up finding here, as you kind of watch me run around a bit, that um, I kind of got a method down. And that was that you, you could actually tell which hole the rabbit was going to go to for the most part. They stick pretty close to the hole. And what I would do is I would align myself so that the hole was between myself and the rabbit. And as long as they were a little bit away from the hole, I could then click to attack them and I would run at them. And essentially I would run over the hole right about the time they would kind of want to run to the hole, which means they have to run right through me. And my attack would just automatically go off as they kind of ran uh, within range to try to run essentially between my legs to get home. So I was able to effectively kill any rabbit that I sought out as long as I uh, had the hole lined up right. Sometimes I would run at them and it turns out they w were associated with a different rabbit hole so they would run off a different direction but for the most part it worked out pretty well and that was a big key to a lot of my successes in this uh, in this attempt. So as you can see here I'm kinda getting my initial camp set up. In fact I've been chopping trees so I plant a bunch using the pine cones. This way I can just kinda run up north of my camp and chop those down for some wood. I uh, place a chest here at night. It's obviously good for storing items. I'm kind of storing some food there. Morsels that I gain from rabbits. I'm planting some berry bushes. Uh, those are nice. Those kind of things like berry bushes and the, um, and the twigs and everything are really good to have nearby so you can kind of uh, harvest those things at night when you're kind of hanging out bored. <laughs> and uh, you can see I'm planting farms here, dropping in seeds. You can fertilize them with the manure, so kind of have a hard time finding that spot with that. But uh, but yeah, I even get some grass planted around here and and uh, basically try to get things set up so that when nightfall comes, you can you know get to gathering things. You know you can start gathering up some grass and get the berries and everything because those things grow. They uh, they come back eventually. So grow. Uh -oh. So here I uh, smacked a uh, nest of spiders, figured I would kind of kite them as you see and spin around and smack them, which worked out pretty well. Got some silk, I left one behind back there, but um, I noticed I left behind some gold earlier too in the episode, but eh, what do you know, I get running around like crazy and not paying as much attention as I should. Setting up camp surrounded by roads may not have been the best idea. It's pretty hard to uh, plant bushes and grass in cobblestone. So here I run into a bit of trouble digging in the graveyard. Uh, kind of dig up a ghost. And uh, yeah, he hurts. Armor's ineffective against him and uh, repeated smacks to the face of the spear largely ineffective so <laughs> we run away graveyards are a great place to get research points because when you dig up graves you find various items rings and odd odds and ends just some random very random things in there but they can be fed into your science machine and they're worth a lot of research points i believe they're worth uh, 80 or so so it's a really good place to uh 
set up camp, which you see me doing here. As I'm far away from the first camp, um, I set up a second one so I can kind of gather some of the resources here that are unique to the area, like uh, manure is slightly off to the left, and the graveyard is just north, and of course there are a lot of trees that I'm right up against here, so I, the idea is to have two camps to move between uh, to go after various resources, so that's what you see me doing here, kind of getting getting set up. I'm chopping trees, just kind of gathering some of the nearby resources, flowers and things like that. My life was low, so I was trying to get flower petals, which can help uh, bring that up. As it turns out, um, there's different kinds of food you can eat too that not only help with your hunger, but they help with your life. So uh, yeah, I'm just kind of getting getting established here and with the uh, second camp. I'm not sure it's always the best kind of idea to have the two camps, but that's what I went for. So now that I had the log armor on, I decided it's time to make an attempt for a beefalo kill. As you can see, I smack one and they all chase me. I decided to kite again and end up getting kind of two out here and take them both out. That log armor is amazing and that made that possible. As you can see there, my armor was brought down to 17%, but the armor took all of the damage. My life was not touched at all fighting those guys. So what you're seeing here is I've decided to break down the first camp. There's actually a hammer you can make that breaks down structures. So chest, uh, the farm, and, and things like that. And I've broken down the science machine. So you can see me bust down the farm there, which leaves behind the manure and everything, so you can kind of pick it up. So basically you can break down these structures, pick up the materials that made them, and carrying them over to the next camp, which was my intended purpose. I kind of wanted to move everything over, so I had plenty of food and everything and was ready to move on. So once over at the other side here, you'll see me kind of start to get established again. I put down a chest and fortunately, having used the hammer, I had my material and was able to put down a second chest. So I've got even more storage, which is great because at this point I'm really kind of hoarding food from uh, whether it's spider meat or the buffalo meat or rabbits and, and I'm really, really concerned about not eating. So definitely want to have a lot of places to store food. I don't want to have to leave anything behind and that's what tends to happen. If I've got to leave something behind I generally can leave out food. Um, probably not the best decision a lot of times but that just kind of seems to be what we go for. So I've got the science machine down. You can see me throw the farm down now. I'm kind of getting set up. You see I had already set the trees up earlier so I've kind of got a little farm for those going and now I'm getting the bushes down, getting some berries planted nearby, and and some of the plants too, so I can get those, uh, the sticks, the twigs, whatever they're called. I, I don't recall actually offhand, but um, but yeah, I'm starting to gather more materials. I'm kind of looking at different things like the alchemy machine. I'd really like to get that going. Right now, I'm just kind of gathering resources as I look through things from time to time. Like you know, what do I want to make next? Um, I mentioned the alchemy machine, but there was a couple other things as well. Uh, with the log armor being low, I kind of would like to have another set ready to go. Um, being able to stand up to creatures like the beefalo is, is huge. I mean, for the cost of uh, that log armor, that 83%, I guess, I was able to get a lot of food. So you see me gathering a lot of wood here and everything. Um, another another idea here is to be getting a lot of boards because some of the things I want to make require that. So lots of wood gathering and as you can see lots of wood planting in preparation. At this point I begin gathering stone. Uh, I'll need some stone in order to make the uh, stone kind of bricks, the cut stone, and uh, gold as well which you also get from mining. So those are two materials to make an alchemy machine. 
the third being bored, so obviously before I was kind of getting prepped for that. So anyway, we're out gathering stone and uh, gold for uh, in preparation for that. Of course, we're going to need a lot of research. It takes 500 research to make that as well. So much to do. Fortunately, you can throw some gold, the gold that I'm not going to be using, into the research machine, and that helps out quite a bit. Having established the second camp and kind of getting things situated, I start to explore a little bit. I'm kind of running around checking out the area, but also digging up various plants to bring back to the camp so I can plant them, harvest them, and ha let them regrow near me. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit of both of exploration and gathering. And um, exploration tends to not go that well for me. And well, let's just see kind of where this goes. nice little bug there. Well, I'm bringing the speed back to normal here, uh, slowing it down a bit, so you know things are about to go poorly for me. And like that, all my successes for the day, gone. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.